Hi there, welcome back to Access. Today we want to look at a database that has more than one table to see how relationships can be made between tables and how we can pull information from multiple tables at the same time. From the lab webpage, I've downloaded the file that's called JuiceWorld2008 underscore awards, and that database has already been filled with information. I've already saved it to my hard drive in a folder called uh, Access2, so I'm just going to click on it and open it up. As, of, as always, there will be a security warning, so we click the Options button and enable the content. And we can see in the familiar access window, on the left-hand side, we are only looking at tables. So I'm going to click the drop-down list, go back to All Objects, and I see that my database only contains three tables. The first table is the juice table, so I'll just take a look at it. And we can see that we have our eight different types of juice. We have prices, we have their taste value, and we have two new fields that we haven't seen before. So let me just explain these very briefly. The first field is called A code, and that stands for the award code. And that will be used to represent an award that the juice has won. So since strawberry has the IM code inside the award table, that, or inside the award code field, then it won some sort of award, and its code was IM. Beside that, you can see the C code field. C code represents a country code. So instead of the full name of the country, we've reduced the size of this field to be only two characters long. This is a process known as normalization, which takes repeated information from one table and places it in a different table, in this case the country table, so that the word that we're looking for, for instance, maybe Canada, will only appear once in the country table, but a short form or a much shorter version of that word will appear as a code in another field. If you have questions about this, feel free to ask your lab instructor. So we have a two-letter country code that represents the country that each of the juice came from. So I'm going to close the country, this juice table, and we're going to take a look at some of the other tables. I have a country table, and if I double click on the country table, I'm in data sheet view. Remember the two views are data sheet view and design view that we're working with. And inside this table, we can see the name of the country as well as its short form. So if I wanted to know what country was BR from the juice table, I can simply look it up in the country table and I find a field called C name, which is, represents the country name. And I find that BR represents Brazil. So I have BR for Brazil. Canada, China, Ecuador, Egypt, and the United States as just some sample countries that are inside this table. So I have six countries and I have eight juice. So that's also something to keep track of. When you're opening a database for the first time, you want to take a look at the data and we're going to also take a look at the design of the fields so that we can see, uh, get a feel for the data and how it's been put together because we're going to be working with it. So actually, now that I have the country table open, I can, switch, I can switch very quickly into design view, and I can look at the C code field. I have my primary key. It is a text field. It's called the country code. And down at the bottom, I see that its field size is 2. Now what we're going to do is we now know, obviously, that the C code field in the juice table is similar to or exactly the same as the C code field in the country table. So those two pieces of information are connected together. They're related. So we're going to join them using a database tool called the relationship table, or the uh, relationship tool. So the tables from juice and country have a relationship to each other, because the data in one is connected to the data in another. Now, when we want to set the relationship between two fields, we have to make sure that they have the same field size and data type. So just by taking a quick look here, the field size for the C code field is 2, and its text is uh, its data type is text. So I'm going to close the table, and I'm going to go look at the juice table, because I forgot to do that, go into the design of the juice table, and I see that I was uh, could pretty much assume that the C code field would also be a two-letter country field. So it's the juice's country of origin, and it's two letters long. And I also see that the A code field is the next one I'm going to look at. It's also a text field size of two letters long. So close that out and I can take a look at the awards table. Now by looking at the awards table I can see that a juice that has a code IM in its A code field won the International Juice Medal. If it had an MA then it won the Marketing Genius Award and TC represents Taster's Choice Award. So out of all the eight juices some of them won one of these three awards. 
So now I know what the layout of each of these tables are, and I have a feeling for some of the data. Now in a real situation with a real database, you might not see all of the records in one particular table or all of the tables, but you want to get a feeling for an understanding of the type of data that will be stored in it. Now that I understand the structure of all the tables and each of the data that's in, the data that's in them, I want to actually start by creating the relationship between these tables. So we are working with Access, which is a relational database management system, and each of these tables is also known as a relation. But what we're doing is we're making relationships between each of the tables. I'm going to move to the Database Tools tab, and there's definitely a lot of exciting things going on on the, relation, on the Database Tools tab, but I'm going to click on the button that's called Relationships. It tells us that it's going to define how the data in tables is related, such as ID fields or name fields in different tables that should match. So when you click on the Relationships tool, it opens up the screen and kind of just floats there. But if you double click on the title bar that says Relationships, then the Relationship window will now take up the whole screen. Now there is a button here called the Show Table button, just like we saw when we created queries. So I'm just going to click on it and it will allow me to add the three tables to our relationship window. I'm going to add the juice table, the country table, and the awards table, and I can do that by double clicking on each of the table names, and then I simply close the window. I'm actually going to rearrange these just a little bit. I'm going to put juice in the middle, and I'm going to put A code on one side and C code on the country on the other. Awards on one side and country on the other. Now the key in relationships is to know which fields in which tables are the same, they have the same field type and uh, field size, then I will simply connect those fields together. So the C code field in one table, in the country table, is get related to the C code field in the juice table. So I'm going to just click and drag the C code field and drop it onto the other C code field. It doesn't actually matter which one you choose first. But a dialog box has opened up, and we'll see that it says that the table on one side is the country table, it points to our C code field. We could change that if we needed to, but that's the exact field we want. And I also have the C code field in the other table. I want you to check mark the Enforce Referential Integrity checkbox. You'll notice that we are making what's known as a one to many relationship. In this particular case, it means that there is one country code that is assigned to each juice, but many juice could have the same country code. So try and keep that in mind. So we've made our connection by dragging the relationships together. We've clicked on the check mark for Enforce Referential Integrity. And we're actually going to cascade updates and deletes just to be safe. I'm going to hit Create. And now you'll see that there's a black line that joins the C code field from Country and the C code field in Juice. Now I'm actually going to drag and drop A code from Awards to the A code in Juice and I get the same window pop up for edit relationships, so enforce referential integrity, cascade update related fields, and cascade delete related records. Those two fields are those two checkboxes are actually important for when we delete a record out of the awards table, then we have to also make changes to juice that might have been connected to those awards. So we're just going to click again that's a one to many relationship. The relationship between awards and juice is a one-to-many relationship because a juice will only win one award, but one award could be have been awarded to many other juice. So I've made this connection and I'm going to click create. Again, we have this black line. On the one side of our one-to-many relationship, we have the little sign one, and on the many side, so there's many juice that could have different awards or that could have a specific award, there's a little infinity sign. If you did not click on that relationship for the uh, en enforce referential integrity, then you would not get the one and the infinity sign, but you would get the little black line. You can also see just a little bit of fun stuff here that these lines stretch automatically if you click and drag them into different places. And if you had accidentally joined the wrong tables together or the wrong fields together, you can very carefully click on one line and you might have noticed that that line got thicker. It's now a darker black and I can press the delete key and it will actually say, do I want to delete the relationship? So I could say yes, but it is the correct one. So I'll say no. And so now I've made this nice little diagram 
that represents the relationship between juice, countries, and awards. I will also point out that this database has a slightly different structure than the one we've used before. There's no primary key in the juice table. That's okay, it's not important for this particular topic. But what I do want to point out is the difference between a primary key and a foreign key. So over here in the country, we have a primary key, which is the C code. And that's the code that we know is going to represent a, the name of a country. So there's no country that's going to have a duplicate country code. So that field is our primary key for the country table. Same with awards. The A code field is going to be our primary key for the awards table so that there'll be no duplicates. Now when a primary key appears in a different table, it's known as a foreign key. So when C code is visible in the juice table, it's known as the foreign key in a, it's a foreign key in the juice table. Now there's a little notification we'll see a notation that we'll see as we work through this where you will sometimes have the name of the table written and then beside it there is the name of the field that you're talking about and in between there's a period. So I know that I can talk about the C code field from the juice table and the C code field from the country table very easily. So I finished this relationship. I'm going to hit close. It gives me a question. Do I want to save the relationship layout? And I'll say yes. Now, whenever I perform a query, I will get the proper results in my query because this relationship has been made and will now take place no matter how many queries I make. Just as a word of warning, if you create a query and try to pull information from multiple tables and they're not joined but they're supposed to be, then things that could happen is you'll get way too many records or you'll get duplicates. So if I wanted to list all the juice and I know there's only eight juice, if I had somehow made a query and ended up listing 48 juice, then I know that I've had a problem with my relationship somehow.